Welcome to Extraordinary Women on ThatChannel.com. I'm your host, Shannon Skinner. Well, I have a great show lined up for you today. In the first half hour, you're going to meet Anne Day, who is the founder of Company of Women. And later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top tip on creating a successful life. You'll hear Anne's. And uh, I have an event that I would like to tell you about um, that you need to know about. It's called Amazing Women's Day, which is happening in Toronto on April 16th at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Uh, it's a day of celebrating feminine leadership, uh, where women are coming together for a day of inspiration and uh, transformation. Uh, you don't want to miss it. For more information, uh, you can see the website at AmazingWomensDay.com, which will take you directly to a link to the Toronto site. Extraordinary Women is a proud media partner of Amazing Women's Day. I will be there. Uh, please come out. Uh, we would love to see you there. So uh, more about that later. Um, my first guest, Anne Day. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm glad to have you here. Now, you're the founder and president of Company of Women. You've headed up several charities. You've run a parenting magazine. You won several awards. Wow. You're based in Toronto. But of That's course, right. you have a farm in uh, Guelph. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So bringing together people um, is not new to you. I mean, this is something that you have been doing for, for a while now. Yes. Um, I, actually, my daughter would probably joke and say it's because I was an only child and I was always looking for people to play with. Um, but I've always worked in fields where I've been bringing people together. I think when you find other people that are like-minded, you find you're not alone. And I think you also learn that other people have the same issues and challenges. And that's good. It creates a sense of community and, and belonging. We all want to belong to something. Why do you think we want to belong to something? I mean, there is, uh, there is some truth to that. I mean, what do you think Well, I think in our fast-paced life, we get so caught up in sort of, well, social media, ways of working on the internet that we forget about face-to-face -face contact. And I think meeting other people face-to-face -face really makes a difference. Um, I personally much prefer to meet people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or a group. And social media maybe has taken some of that. Uh, it's, it's taken away, away from that. I mean, it has its place, but I think mm -hmm. it's taken away from that, yes. But uh, you're determined uh, not to let that happen. Now, you've had a, an eclectic career. Um, you call yourself uh, sort of an umbrella term, a, a social entrepreneur. That's right. Um, a lot of the things that I have done have been really for other people other than for myself, uh, starting up agencies, even starting company of women. I see that as more of a social enterprise because any money we make goes back into the organization and so uh, it's always been for other people's benefit rather than my own, so yes. So it's time for you to be doing something that is important to you as well. Well, I think all of it has always been important to me. Uh, you know, making a difference is, is what drives me, so. Now, of all the things that you've done, now you, you ran a parenting magazine and you've headed up some charities. Um, you know, you've, you've started this fantastic organization. Uh, you've worked for the government. What has been your proudest moment of everything you've done, Anne? Well, of course, I knew you were going to be asking me that, and I've been thinking about it, thinking, oh, what could I say? I could talk about my family, this, that, the next thing. But when it drills down, I think receiving the Entrepreneur of the Year Award was probably it. Um, I felt a bit like Sally Fields when she said, oh, you really like me, you really like me. I felt sort of recognized and supported by my peers, because I think for a lot of the time, like a lot of women, I felt a bit of an imposter that they were going to find me out. So to, to win that award was really important to me. So I think that would probably be my proudest moment. Now you live uh, on a farm um, yes. near Guelph. And uh, this has been, we were chatting earlier, and I, I, you know, I'm very curious to know what life was like on a farm because of course you've been working in the city and everything you've been doing uh, for many years has been uh, buying the farm was kind of a, an accident we we just uh, saw an ad went to see it 
fell in love with the place. Well, actually, not true. My husband fell in love with the place. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and you didn't? And I came along. No, I wouldn't say I didn't, but I, you know, I'm certainly not a country gal. And you know, while he's lusting after the, the tractors, I'm busy asking the real estate agent, you know, well, where are the stores? <laughs> What's the, where are the nearest stores? But over the years, I've really come to love the place. We've created a real oasis for ourselves, and, and the people are amazing uh, locally. And uh, last year, we got cows, and that was a whole other experience. So you learn a lot. You learn a lot, and it's a different pace, which is good. And you, you bought a home that was, well, certainly not a, a brand new home on your farm. No, it's a 150-year-old, century-old stone farmhouse, which we've renovated and actually added on an addition, which is an old 200-year-old log cabin. So it's quite the place. Now, you spent a lot of time renovating, as you said, and uh, you have some, had some visitors there that <laughs> haven't really been welcomed. Welcomed, no. No, I think probably our favorite story is the one of, um, I was in, in the John, and I looked down, and there was this massive milk snake crawling towards me, and I can tell you, I've never moved so quickly. And I went rushing outside to tell my husband, and uh, he wanted the camera. He wanted a photo, and I'm thinking, this isn't a Kodak moment. This is sort of, get it out of the house. So uh, anyway, I'm actually, I'm really good now with snakes, <laughs> amazingly enough. You get used to all these things. Do you find it peaceful? It's very peaceful. Mm. It's very peaceful. We have 85 acres, so I mean, it's, there's not really anybody around us, and it's, it's lovely. And do you have to then drive in? Yeah, uh, that's the negative. Yeah. <laughs> all the commuting. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I live in in the beach area, and um, I can't imagine really what it would be like to have to commute in and out of Toronto. But you know, um, I, I would imagine for that uh, serenity and peace, it would be so worth it. Well, I started taking Fridays off, so that's one day at least that I'm not commuting. I mean, I may work at home, but uh, that's you know, it's been worth it. And and your farm is near a town called. It's in a little village, village called Creef, which is tiny. You know, you drive through and blink, and then uh, you've missed it. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's lovely there. Now, you mentioned a little bit about what drives you. What what really drives you? What is really driving you to to have created all of these different uh, organizations, uh, uh, run a magazine? Um, I think it's, it is making a difference. I've been very fortunate in life and my father raised me that you give back. If you've been fortunate, you give back to other people. So um, that's really what drives me. I, I love to see a woman gloss, blossom and grow and really reach her potential. It doesn't have to be in a business, it could be in a career. But that to me makes it all worthwhile. Um, so that's, what's, that's what drives me. Now of course that's a, a lot of what you're doing with Company of Women. Um, what is the organization about? Um, I started it eight years ago. I was working as a consultant at the time, and I found it very isolating working at home. And I felt, I'm sure other women feel the same way. So I booked some space. I guaranteed 35 people at this hotel, and I got 165 women out at the first event. So I knew then I was on to something. And basically, we run events for, for women. Um, we have probably about 12 events a month. We have a magazine. We put on an annual conference, which is coming up June 21st. Um, we have an extensive website. We've published a couple of books. So we've done a lot for, for women and women entrepreneurs. Today we have about 400 members. We serve about 4,000 women through our different uh, efforts. And um, we have about six chapters across the GTA. Well, in fact, you have a magazine here. I'll just maybe hold it up to the camera and so we can look at see it. It's a great, uh, a great format. So, yeah, that's it's what the company. women. Say. Yeah, it's called company. Yeah, women like it because the the articles are short. They can put it in their purse and just sort of dip into it as and when they can. Now we're going to be talking a bit more about uh, company of women when we come back uh, from a break, which we have to take now, and that means that it's time for my good to know minute. And Anne, I know you've got a great tip. Well, I find everyone has a different definition, especially women, of what success is. And I think it's important to know what your definition is, not what your partner is, what anybody else is influencing you, but what yours is. And to be true and authentic to yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. 
Thank you so much, Anne. You're welcome. Well, we're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, more with Ann Day, founder of Company of Women. But during this break, you're going to see a video about Amazing Women's Day, so uh, stay tuned. Merry Women, I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm here speaking with Ann Day, founder of Company of Women. Um, and so we've been talking a little bit about the organization before we went to break. Um, and why is it really important for women to have organizations like Company of Women? I think women network differently to men. I think we're very much more into building relationships and not doing what I call the business card shuffle where it's, it's kind of shallow and insincere. We want to get to know each other because women will refer women will do business with women that they know and trust and so you have to build a relationship to do that. I also find that the women, um, we treat the women, we're interested in them as women not just as the, because they have a business and so um, it, it's the whole woman rather than just just the business. Now you have a new book coming out. Yes. <laughs> What's your book about? Well, I, when I started, it's called Day by Day, and when I started it, um, it was really going to be a business book because there's not much out there for women that really tells them what it's really like. Um, and But then what happened was I, some people were starting to read it and were saying, you know, Anne, you've got a really interesting story. You should start putting some of your personal stories in. So I did. I mean, there's some really funny ones, it's like the one about the snake, about the farm, and there's some other stories. So it's, it's about business, but it's also about life. And when I first started, I had the business section, then I had the life section, and then I thought, you know what? Our lives as women are, is not like that, so I've mixed them all up. And it also keeps people, you know, we all want to know what's happening in somebody else's life, so it keeps their attention. It's very short stories, um, easy to read, easy to dip into. Can you give me an example of a story that's in there? I mean, we've talked a little bit about the snake, but I didn't know that part was in the book. Yeah, it is in the book. <laughs> I can't wait to read the book, actually. Um, but, uh, well... You know, I've talked about some of the women we've helped, um, like uh, Marissa McTasney, who's with Moxie Trades. I have talked about some of the lessons that we've learned in running Company of Women, and we've made our share of mistakes, as like anybody else. I've talked about the fact that I've had cancer and, and what I learned from that, and that really does motivate me in terms of, of helping other women. And a bit about sort of growing up in England and, and so forth. Yep. You know, cancer, you've, uh, this is something that you've gone through a few times. Yes, yes, yeah, I didn't learn the first time. <laughs> so I've been through it twice. Um, now, ha how has that impacted your life? I think it really just makes you focus on what's important. I mean, it hasn't, it's shaped my life, but it isn't my life. I mean, I certainly wouldn't be someone who's gone off and had a pity party, but I think it does make you realize you've got one life to live and you have to make the most of it and make a difference them and, and be around the people you want to be around. So, Anne, where can people buy your book? I know it's not quite out no, in it's, print No, it's yet, at the publishers right now. It will be out at the end of April. Uh, people can order it online from our website, which is companyofwomen.ca. And um, after May 1st, it will be available at Chapters and Amazon online, too. Okay, great. Well, that's great. Are you going to have launch? Yes, we are. <laughs> Big party. I'm into parties. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've, um, you're also you're involved with the National Task Force. Um, that is something that's really important to you. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about what you're hoping to achieve. Well, um, the task force is made up of women entrepreneurs, academics, uh, women in government, who are concerned about the fact that women don't grow their businesses at the same rate as men. And there, there are several reasons. Some of it's risk-adverse access to services. For myself personally, I got involved because it, in each province across the country there is a women's enterprise center where they can access training and they can access funds. We do not have one in Ontario, which seems incredible to me when we're one of the larger provinces and there's a million women entrepreneurs across Canada and Ontario doesn't have a women's enterprise center. So that's what drives me. Um, we're having round tables. We've produced a, a blueprint. Uh, we're asking government to start uh, supporting women through special funds, access to services, uh, and so forth. And so the, the 
tr round, we're having a round table in Toronto at the beginning of May and I'm chairing that committee to pull that together. A million women entrepreneurs yeah. across Canada. Yeah, just think about it. What a difference we're making to the economy. So, Isn't that incredible? Do you know what the numbers are in Ontario alone? I don't. No? I don't. And that actually is, it speaks to the problem too because there's very few gender specific statistics maintained. So. So how is it that men and women view success differently? differently? Yeah. Well, I think women get into businesses for different reasons. I mean, for men, it's usually very much to, to make money, to provide for their families. Whereas for women, I think it's much more to gain control over their lives because often they're juggling family and work and everything else. So that means it's their goals are a bit different. So their ideas of success are different. They also tend to go into service-related industries which don't make so much money and which uh, on the whole bankers don't really like to fund so that makes it difficult and the other big one is just we question ourselves we we self-doubt ourselves you know we, we don't always have the confidence to take our businesses to the next level so as women do we have problem asking for what we want yes we do yeah I remember having a speaker Erica M saying you just have to ask and, that, and that's really very true and you know, it uh, as I've learned in my life, it takes courage to really admit what's in your heart and then to ask for it. Exactly, exactly. It takes a lot of courage. With um, the you know the women that you you are um, you know within the, the your, that you connect yeah. with in, in company of women, um, what are the common similar issues, uh, particularly for women entrepreneurs, that, that you're seeing? I call it the three C's, you know, cash, confidence, and customers, finding customers in the first place, and even finding the ideal customer, because you can find customers, but if they give you the runaround all the time, then they're not necessarily the ones you want to keep. Cash, just because it's very hard to get, get finances when you're starting up, and, um, and women aren't as good at, at um, looking at the financial statements and the, there's a, a, a gap in financial literacy to a certain extent and the confidence is just what I was talking about in terms of you know self-doubt second-guessing ourselves. So why? I mean why is it that we're not good at financial statements? I mean why is it that we're not good as good at asking? Why is it that we doubt maybe in business ourselves more than men. I'd like to probe it just a little bit more. Well, I think we're really good at relationships and I mean mm. that's where we really succeed and I think a lot depends on who you have, who you surround yourself with. And so if you're surrounding yourself with people that sort of are saying, well, yeah, that's never going to work, you know, it, it, we can get suckered in by that. That's why when I was giving my one piece of advice was, you know, be true to yourself and, and be authentic. Um, I don't know. I mean, I never liked math at school, so I'm just as guilty as the next person. So it wasn't a personal interest for you? Yeah. No, it wasn't. And, it, and you know, it still is the piece where I sort of think, oh, I suppose I should look at my cash flow statement and so forth. I mean, you have to. So then it perhaps does it come down to values and what we value? Um, it's, it's what we value and, and also what we've had training in. Mm -hmm. um, we've often thought of putting sort of financial training on the website because then you don't have to admit to anyone that you don't know what to do but you've got it up on the website and at your, the comfort of your own home you can download how to read a financial statement and so forth. But yeah you know it's not my very favorite thing no, to do. No that's what I mean. So. Yeah no I'm, <laughs> I'm much more inclined to want to write and, uh, and create and, and think and plan. I enjoy strategic planning but certainly the financial uh, statements are usually something that you know, you know April when April tax time comes around you sort of dread it you think oh my god I don't want to crunch <laughs> any more numbers. <laughs> but uh, you know um, so I think that I can sort of relate to a lot of women then. Well, and I think they're risk adverse. They're scared. You know, mm. they're not as willing to take risks um, as as women as men are. So again, maybe that comes back down to confidence. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. And believing in yourself, perhaps. Yeah. 
I mean, we were talking before about, I interviewed Pamela Wall and, and, and I asked her how she got from, you know, the farm girl in Saskatchewan to being in the Senate. And she said her rule was she always said yes to anything that took her out of her comfort zone. And uh, yeah, good for her. I, I really think we do have to stretch ourselves. Well, otherwise we stay small, don't we? Well, we do. Actually, yeah. not long after I interviewed her, I got asked to speak in Turkey. And public speaking is, is not my comfort zone. And, and especially in Turkey. In then. Turkey. So I said yes. And it was such a wonderful experience. And I, I sort of thank Pamela for sort of putting that out, you know, say yes. Because you never know where it's going to lead you, or what's going to happen. So. so be authentic and yeah. say yes. Um, now, do you have, uh, are there any events coming up with the Company of Women that you'd like to, to Well, talk I think specifically? probably the main one that we have is on June 21st, mm -hmm. and it's our all-day conference. This is the fifth one that we have had, and uh, it's just a wonderful day. We have Diane Buckner with, from Dragon's Den as our keynote speaker, and um, Great. we usually have about 200 women there, and it's just a very inspiring, motivating day. You sort of learn some skills, but you also get motivated that yes you can do this and so forth. So and then how can people find out more information about uh, about Company of Women at uh, companyofwomen.ca that's, that's the, website. the website. And again for your book that's where they can find That's where they can find that and there's a link on the website. We actually have a separate website for the uh, conference which is journey to number 2 success okay. but they can link from the main website to that so. Um, and and of course, you're on Facebook. Your company of women. On I, Facebook. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. And, and you're on and Twitter, Twitter. Company of women. Yeah. On tw at company of women. Yeah. On Twitter. That's great. Um, now, what's next for you? I think the book is probably the next project, really, because I mean right. it's just being published. So I'm going to be out and about talking and hopefully selling lots of books and getting the message out to women that they can do it. Um, but I've already got ideas for a second book. So that's one of the things at the farm. It's really in. It really encourages you to write. It's very peaceful, so lots of time for writing. Maybe I should buy a farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some time to write. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Anne, it's been such a pleasure having you here uh, on the show today and speaking with you. And uh, I'm looking forward to finding out more, or to, you know, to speaking with you further and uh, following your uh, path with what you're doing with uh, Company of Women. And I'm looking forward to your book. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me this morning. Yeah, thank you.